Hello everyone, this is another video for the Q Center at UConn and uh, this time on integration techniques uh, we're going to be talking about a method of trigonometric substitution. So let's get right to it. Uh, the method of uh, substitution, of trigonometric substitution, is a method that is, um, it's a uh, use substitution that you probably already know, uh, where the substitution is a, in a specific form. It's one of these three, either we take x uh, and that's a constant times sine or a constant times tangent or a constant times secant and uh, I'm going to try to explain when you make uh, what choices. So um, the method works best when you see integrals where something of this sort appears, a square root of a constant minus a square of the variable uh, or uh, a constant plus the square of a variable or a variable minus a variable square minus a constant. We'll see all three cases. When you see something like this, a uh, constant minus the square of a variable to uh, usually there is a square root or a fractional power or some power of that, uh, of that quantity, then the best uh, uh, choice is to use a times sine theta where a is the the square root of the number that appears here uh, because when you simplify out when you plug in this for x you see you get uh, a square minus a square sine square theta and then uh, pull out the a square and you get 1 minus sine square theta and thanks to the trigonometric identity that says that sine square plus cosine square equals 1 we get that this simplifies to a square times cosine square of theta which is a square and it will be able to uh, cancel out with the square root and therefore will be able to continue the integration. Uh, similarly, if you see a quantity uh, constant plus the square of a variable under a square root, usually we use x equals uh, the constant a times tangent theta. Again, because now we are going to exploit the uh, trigonometric identity that 1 plus tangent square of theta equals secant square of theta, uh, because you see once you plug in this value of x in this expression you get a squared plus a squared tangent squared theta you pull out the a squared and 1 plus tangent squared theta becomes secant squared and again this whole quantity is a square and when uh, substituted in here we can cancel out with the square root and similarly again uh, if you see an, a square of a variable minus a constant then uh, it's best to use x equals a secant theta because then uh, the quantity under the square root becomes uh, a square where it's uh, the constant square times tangent square of theta and again we can continue uh, carry on with our integration. Okay, so let's see uh, some examples. Um, first a warning that really trigonometric substitution is one of your last resorts. You should try the simpler trigonometric, the simpler um, uh, methods of integration first. For instance, uh, if you see this example, you might be tempted to use trigonometric substitution and try to use uh, x equals, uh, because this is a square, this is a constant minus the square of the variable and the square root, I get uh, excited and I try to do um, 3 sine theta for that uh, substitution and I can try that uh, but uh, in this case there is a better option which is the uh, regular substitution, uh, U substitution. So instead, why not do U equals uh, because uh, you see it's going to be a regular U substitution because the, uh, the derivative of the inside inside the square root appears up here. Uh, that tells me that this is somewhat of, uh, uh, of the result of a chain rule, so I can go backwards using a u substitution. So I'm going to use u equals the inside of the integral, 9 minus x squared, then du is minus 2x dx, and therefore uh, x dx is um, minus, 1 over, um, minus 1 over 2 du, and I can proceed and do the integration using this substitution so that the integral that I was uh, asked for, uh, the integral I need to solve, 
that I can transform to uh, minus one half from here comes out integral of the x dx is just the, the du with the minus I have in front. So I'm just going to put u here. And inside the square root, I have, um, uh, I have the square root of u. This I can do because um, this is just no other than um, minus 1 half uh, integral of u to the minus 1 half du. And that is, uh, that is a, a power. So that is going to be minus 1 half u to the uh, minus 1 half plus 1. So 1 half divided by a half plus constants. And that is uh, the 2 and 2 are going to cancel out. So I just get minus the square root of u, really, plus constants. And that is uh, going back to the substitution we did. That's minus the square root of 9 minus x squared plus constants. You see that that is, that is indeed the case, that if I um, take the derivative of this, uh, of this function, I will get um, 1 over twice the same as square root times the derivative of the inside, which is minus 2x with the minus, um, 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 with the, the minus will come out. So let me just do it out. The derivative would be um, uh, the derivative of the inside, let's say, minus 2x times uh, the derivative of this function, um, which is minus 1 over twice the same square root of 9 minus x squared, um, which is going to cancel out the 2, cancel out the 2, and the sign and the sign cancels out, and then you get. Uh, x over the square root of 9 minus x squared. So we see that um, we've checked that this is in fact correct. So uh, this kind of integral, even though it looked like what I was mentioning, that it looked like a trigonometric substitution, it's better done through uh, u substitution. This is the, the answer. All right. So um, let's move on to uh, another example where we are going to use trigonometric substitution to do our integral. OK, so now we're going to solve a problem where we are going to be using the method of trigonometric trig substitution to solve the problem. Let's, uh, let's start by setting up the problem. We need to figure out, we need to prove that the area of a circle of radius 2 is 4 pi. Um, so uh, let's draw a circle. And this is 2. So if this is the origin, here is 2, and here is minus 2. Instead of proving that the whole area is 4 pi, so the whole thing should be 4 pi, what I'm going to do is prove that the top, uh, the top semi uh, circle, uh, the area is uh, 2 pi. And for that, I'm going to set up this uh, circumference, this piece of the circumference as a graph of the square root of 4 minus x squared. And what I need to do then is to prove that the integral from minus 2 to 2 of the square root of 4 minus x squared dx is 2 pi. All right. So let's do just that. And uh, we're going to use the method of trigonometric substitution. Um, so I want to integrate from minus 2 to 2 the square root of 4 minus x squared dx. And I'm going to use a substitution uh, of x. Uh, so you see there is a constant minus, a positive constant minus a square of a variable inside the square root. So that's a sign that trigonometric substitution will work well. And if you look at our uh, previous slides, then uh, the recommended substitution is uh, a sine theta, where the a is the square root of this number that appears here, so the square root of 4. So the substitution that should work is 2 sine theta. And uh, using that substitution, uh, we need to find what dx is. dx will be 2 times the derivative of sine cosine theta d theta. 
And for the substitution to work, we are going to also need to figure out how much is the square root of 4 minus x squared under this substitution. So let's do that. That is 4 minus 2 sine theta squared. And that is uh, that simplifies to 4 minus 4 sine squared theta, which is uh, the 4 can come out as a 2 multiplying the square root of 1 minus sine squared theta. And that's the whole point of this substitution because now 1 minus sine squared theta by the trigonometric identities, that's cosine squared theta. So this simplifies to 2 cosine theta. Great. So now we're ready to continue with our uh, substitution. Um, there will be uh, a square root of 4 minus x squared. That is 2 cosine theta. And uh, dx is 2 cosine theta, again, d theta. We also need to figure out what happened to the, uh, with the limits of integration. So what is uh, when x is 2, Oh, uh, that's too high. So let me write it here. When x is 2, uh, we have that 2 is 2 sine theta. So uh, sine of theta equals 1. So that is when, um, when the sine is 1, that means that uh, theta is pi over 2. And uh, when x is minus 2, uh, and that's supposed to be equal to 2 sine theta, that tells me then that sine theta is minus 1, and that happens when the angle is minus 90. So let's put minus 90 there. So now we are integrating between minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. And this is the integral now of minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 of 4 cosine squared theta d theta. That uh, 4 can come out of the integral. And for cosine squared of theta, uh, you integrate cosine squared using the, um, the double, uh, double angle formulas. And that is the identity you usually use for that is this. And now uh, integrate that. That will be the integral of, uh, so there is a, a 4 in front that is going to simplify. I'm going to cancel this 4 with this 4. So I just have a 2 in front. And now uh, the integral of 1 is theta. And the integral of cosine 2 theta is sine of 2 theta divided by 2. Okay, and this we're going to integrate where uh, the limits of integration were from pi over 2 to minus pi over 2. And uh, uh, then that says that, uh, oh, of course, now I notice we could have done, instead of calculating all this, we could have done half of even this or a fourth of the area, and then we would have done integral from 0 to 2, but it doesn't matter. Um, so we get uh, twice. At pi over 2, uh, this is twice pi over 2 plus sine of uh, 2 pi over 2, so uh, sine of pi, but that is 0, minus, evaluate uh, this at pi, at minus pi over 2, plus, and then here again, when I plug in uh, minus pi over 2, I get sine of minus pi, which is again 0. So what do I get? I get twice pi over 2, that's pi, minus minus, so it's plus, plus another pi, and I get 2 pi as desired. OK, so we found out that the area of the semicircle is 2 pi, therefore the area of the whole circle is 4 pi. All right, so this is the last uh, slide I want to talk about. Uh, the support, uh, support triangles that you use in these kind of exercises. In our previous example, what we did was um, keep the uh, limits of integration through the end. 
and then just switch the limits of integration to the new variable. Sometimes if you are using uh, the method of integration uh, with trigonometric substitutions and you're doing an indefinite integral, you'll find out that you switch to the variable theta, but then you have to go back to the variable x at the end of the exercise. So how do you do that? If you've used, um, if you find something like that in the integral, you've used this uh, trigonometric substitution, and then at the end you have to figure out how to go back to uh, functions that are in terms of theta, go back to functions that are in terms of x. So you have to find what's called a support triangle for this type of, um, um, for this type of, uh, of trigonometric substitution. And uh, what this is, is a triangle where uh, x, a, and theta satisfy this equality. So this says that sine of theta is x over a. So we're looking for an angle whose sine is x over a. So that's easy to find. We can find a triangle such that this is true if this length is x and this is a. In that case, what we need to know is how much is y. Because um, in, uh, in exercises, you'll end up, uh, the solution might be in terms of cosine of theta, and then you need to find out what is cosine of theta. So how much is y to be able to write about um, other quantities of theta? Well, what we know is that um, y squared plus x squared equals a squared by Pythagoras. And that tells me then that y squared is a squared minus x squared, and therefore y, which is a positive quantity, is the square root of a squared minus x squared. So this is in fact that quantity. And now, uh, for instance, I can use that in my favor if I have to write, for instance, how much is cosine of theta in terms of x? Uh, well, in terms of x, cosine of theta will be uh, this length divided by a. So it will be a square root of a squared minus x squared divided by a. Next, uh, we want to write down what is a uh, support triangle for, uh, for this substitution. So now we want an angle theta such that the tangent of theta is x over a. And that means that if this is theta, the tangent is this divided by that. So this is x over a. So now we want to find out how much is the uh, hypotenuse in this case. And the hypotenuse, well, it will be, again, by Pythagoras. Satisfy this of h is the square root of x squared plus a squared. And again, you can find now what is the sine of theta, for instance. If that appears in your integral at the end of the day, then you know that sine of theta is x over h, which is x over the square root of x squared plus a squared. And you can use that to substitute uh, your quantities. And finally, um, this triangle says that the secant of theta is x over a. Uh, that is, the secant is 1 over cosine. So it says that uh, cosine, equivalently, cosine of theta is a over x. So I can write this as a, and this is x. And now uh, this, uh, this side here, uh, what is uh, this side? Now a squared plus h squared equals x squared. And therefore, h squared is x squared minus a squared. And h is the square root of x squared minus a squared. So uh, this is x squared minus a squared. And again, I can use it to calculate any sort of trigonometric function of theta uh, in my calculations. Um, in here, I didn't write that this was the square root of x squared plus a squared. Okay. So again, uh, this is for the type of problems where you're using a trigonometric substitution. And at the end, you want to retrieve your answer in terms of the original variable x. We are going to also post another video on trigonometric substitution uh, next that I will be using these formulas to, to find the, the final answer. So uh, check those out too.
Goodbye.